let's talk about our guests. So tonight we've had two super dope interviews prior. We had Fully Holographic was in here, and we had Good Life Entertainment, courtesy of Big Mike, B Mike Rob, sent them my way, Louisville, Kentucky. But now we have the one, the only, there's only one, Don P. What's up with it? Don P. Official. Hey, hey, what's Now happening? he is the... Um, he is the sole proprietor of the Riding and Smoking podcast. Well, you might have your production team, but I met you recently on your van, mm -hmm. and you're doing a podcast called Riding and Smoking Podcast, which is the first mobile podcast. So that is basically equipped to drive up to you, and you can do the interviews wherever wherever he's at. Air conditioner goes on, too, just so you know, because I'm, <laughs> I'm a spaz about that. Yes. So I want to thank you for that opportunity, first of all, because he did pull me up on the van when Definitely. we were out in Brentwood at the Bosses, the Bay Area Bosses Tour. Yeah. Now it's all about spreading the love, you know what I mean? I feel like everybody, everybody, whatever you're doing should support, you know? Absolutely. You've got to show support and to the people And we kind of talked about you that. You yeah. Know, it's like... Unfortunately, the way that the generation is right now and the way I feel like the way social media is, it's uh, you're kind of discouraged to show love. And it's like that's what we should be doing. That's what it's made to do is show love, share people's stuff. If you're secure in your art, you're going to have no problem doing that. And that's how I've always felt. So I appreciate you. Um, welcoming me on to the bus that night and you've always um, you know just been real supportive in general because that's kind of what we how it should be well I mean if you're trying to build culture like you can't be like a, a hater right you know what I'm saying like if you're trying to like push the culture forward then you got to be able to recognize talent recognize go-getters recognize hustlers mm -hmm. recognize just raw raw pure people that just like, you know, no matter what they look like today, they could just look like a roughed up feather today, but that don't mean they won't be a fiery phoenix tomorrow. Right. That potential is a mother, right? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, and, you know, who knows? They might not be shit, but at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> they might be. You know, they might be. Right. You know, and they got that, that, that certain people just got that unstoppable, like, look and, like, that unstoppable fire in them and i don't know i just recognize it yeah. i've always been able to recognize that in, in people and talent you know yes yeah in people so it doesn't matter if it's music or whatever i just see in life yeah, yeah. i just see pure raw people that really are hungry and that's know? a good eye to have i mean especially coming from your background so let's talk about your background for those people out there that don't know um don p has been in this game for many many years um he rapped with my favorite Rapper Jack is one of my very, very favorite rappers, you know, long live. M.I.P. to Jack. To Jack. Um, and, and everybody in this industry, like, you've worked with everybody, and you also have affiliations with All Bay um, Music. So I wanted to talk about that. So let's start from um, maybe a good starting point for somebody who may just start it, be starting to follow you or just, you know, getting hip to the game. Um, how how did you get your start in this industry, and what what is it that you did? Hmm. What did I do? Mm -hmm. uh, what I did was... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know you're an artist. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, I started rapping, and I just, you know, I enjoy music. I always love music. Um, so, basically, I went around, and I, I asked a bunch of labels to sign me, mm -hmm. um, and they didn't. They said you know, no. They didn't sign me. Um, shoot, you know, I even went to 40. You know, I went to Sick With It. I went there, and... I asked, you know, I asked labels around to sign me, and, and they, you know, 40 had his hands full at the time of what yeah. he was doing, but at the end of the day, he was still always supportive, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, then I ran back into him, and I had put out my own project and had my artwork and everything done, and I handed it to him, and it was hella funny. I'll never forget, because he was like, in his little, you know, in his E-40 voice, you know what Ooh, I'm saying? Yeah. He was like... Oh, you got that done kind of quick. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "Oh, you did that kind of, you know what I mean?" Like impressed. Yeah, you feel mm -hmm. me? And that right there let me know too. Like, okay, um, keep going. You know what I'm saying? Like you getting it done. You know, it mm -hmm. let me know I was getting it done. And uh, so yeah, I just I put out my first album myself. I executive produced my own first album because mm -hmm. I just got tired of asking people, you know, to, for help for help. Mm -hmm. And that's that kind of started my whole journey with. Me being like, I don't want to ask. I'm tired of asking for stuff, so I'm going to just start creating outlets. Mm 
Mm -hmm. You know, and that's kind of where I how I ended up being on this whole route of doing magazines and radio and podcasts. And it turned into a thing where it wasn't about me no more. It started being where it was like, damn, I got these outlets. I'm creating culture. I could help other people. I could help Mm -hmm. other artists as well, you know, move their stuff because I went past the whole. I'm going to start a record label and put out all my, fo- you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I did that. I had fun doing that, too. You know, shouts out to the little homies that I I did get in the studio, like Willie Joe and some of the other artists that I worked with in the Old beginning of the Old school water careers. boys. You know what I'm saying? I had the water boys in the studio when they was, you know what I mean? Like, back in the day. Yeah, yeah, you're some my their, era. Yeah, some of their first stuff, I was working with them when I was just coming back um, off my No Limit run, you know? So, and that's that was the next phase Basically, you know, I started independent, put out my own stuff, you mm-hmm. know, and I went all around and I did all the street promo. I was up and down the I-5, really just hitting the one stops and start doing shows and touring and all that. I did all that independent um, through ground level distribution. I just got to deal with them. Shouts out to my brother D. Bergeson. Um, he hooked it up with Ground Level, got me my first independent deal. And mind you, yeah. everyone listening, this is all before the days of social media. It was yeah, there was no, there was it wasn't as easy. Nah, this was hard. It wasn't really a, it wasn't no social media. It wasn't all that like, all that stuff wasn't around. So it was like record sales and CDs and tapes and all that type of stuff. So you had to negotiate your pay um f- through cds and tapes like what you was gonna get like splits yeah mm-hmm. you know it wasn't like you was waiting for streams or nothing it was actually pretty fucking raw i'm not gonna lie to you mm-hmm. you guys missed an awesome era you know where you 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 I sh- a lot of the young artists i'm not mad like you getting money in lots of ways and that's dope but y'all definitely missing that direct independent money um that was coming um, through CDs and tapes. And um, kind of like the thrill and the, the hood cred that that gave you, you know, like st- popping the trunk I and think it was more. CDs. I think it was more of how it was like um, everybody wasn't doing it. Right, it was very thing. unique. Yeah, it was a more of a unique and thing. And you had to be really serious about your yeah, art. Yeah, you had to be and spend some money, you know, really got in the studio, made an album, had it mixed and mastered for real by only certain people was mixing and mastering, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I took my shit to the grill because I was like, that's where Lil Wayne, that's where all the big right. artists and stuff was recording and mixing and mastering their stuff at, um, um, you know, Tupac and B- I was just hearing all the big names was going there. So I was like, shit, that's who mastering my my stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, it was just a different um, time for where you had to. It was really unique to have a album out. Absolutely. And it was definitely an endeavor because you had to, like you say, book studio time. People were running actual tapes, like actual ADATs, you know, like back yeah. in the old days. It wasn't like it is now. <clears throat> Everybody wanted to be signed to a label, you know, and, and, and be signed. It was just all about trying to get signed, trying to get I'm signed. I'm sure that was probably the initial money or, you know, what yeah. was thought of as what it was at the label. Yeah, everybody thought they was going to get that advance and get that big payday. And, you know, we we seen some, some stuff, you know, some advances and some paydays and stuff like that. Um, it's just all about what you negotiated mm-hmm. and how you, you know, how you structured your deal and how you worked it out. Like, things just, it was a wavy time back then, you right. know. You could get yourself caught up in something that you could still be in right now. Like, you know what <laughs> I mean? Real easy, like. Absolutely. So, you know. Lots it was of gray about, area back then. Yeah, a lot of gray area. It's about being smart and, uh, you know, being a little bit stupid, too, you know. Yeah, enough to kind of finagle it you know like you gotta have some naivety to actually get some enjoyment out of the shit nah if you don't believe in this shit like peter pan about to jump off the balcony like you could fly then just fucking quit now it's not fun right it's not for you like you know what i mean that whole time peter was trying to figure out if he was fly that shit was the if he could fly that was the pits (laughs) you know what i'm saying when you find out yeah Yeah. when you finally find out you can fly then okay shit it feels a lot better but like while you're trying to figure it out like it's literally the pits there's yeah there's not you need to be very um, mindful of how you place yourself in your yeah, brain it could be fun too though like the journey is everything you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. the journey of, uh, of 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 doing this music stuff and doing all this stuff is like I think that's probably the part that a lot of people don't realize like bro we get to do some of the coolest absolutely coolest things trendsetters um, yeah on the planet mm-hmm. so it's like just enjoy that sometimes 
And I think it was uh, Gary Archer, shout out to Gary, who said... Um, shout out G. Arch. Some people may say, oh, I'm not winning, you know, and he's like, but that's really a perspective thing. So right. and he brought me as an example because it's like to others, people see like I'm at the shows, I interview all the movers and shakers, like I know everybody. So I am winning, you know, in my own brain, I'm I'm putting that thought into my own head like, I should be doing better, but it is all a perspective thing. You know, it's really about your perspective on it. So I taught it taught me something when he told me that that day. No, it's, it is up. To, it is perspective, though. You know what I mean? When you think about it, it's up to it's up to you to feel like you winning or not. Like nobody can really tell you if you winning or if mm-hmm. you if you doing it. Um, people gonna have their own perception of what they see you as and all that. But you got to be happy with who you are and what you got going on, you know? Right. Um, Because when you go outside and other people who ain't really looking at you with a, like, like a certain lens that people who just look at your talent and appreciate it, them the people that's going to tell you, like, yeah, you're doing, you're doing your thing. And then that's who you need to keep doing your shit for. Like, mm-hmm. don't, don't focus on those other guys. They're wasting your time. Right. They're we just waste, talked about that. Yeah, they're a waste of time. The the haters, they're a waste of time. Don't focus on them. Don't waste your time on them. We just talked about that. Go like, where the love is at and focus on the people that love you, you know? Like comments and stuff on the on mm. the internet. Like, that really shouldn't even be reading those. Nah, I told somebody else the other day I'm going to stop responding and reading all that stuff, period. It's just toxic. It's stupid. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not finna sit up here and argue back and forth with you, even though... I'm not going to lie. Sometimes it's fun. <laughs> it is, when you, especially when you know you're right. But but I can't do it no more because somebody might say some weird shit to me and then I'll roast them. And then it's a and problem. And then Instagram mm-hmm. will be all on my head mm-hmm. trying to delete my comment and putting strikes on my page. You feel so me? So you kind of have to just check nah, it to the side. Nah, they didn't got me a few times over stuff that wasn't even that big of a deal. Right. Like, I, didn't, I barely said anything, you know? And um, it was this girl, like, she was talking crazy to me, right? She said a bunch of stuff. Like, she she said, like, five caps on me. I let her slide, like, five <laughs> times. Like, literally five times she said, like, five different insults. And we was just talking about music, you know? Mm-hmm. And I was like, dang, you know, um, you're going off on me. And then she said that final cap that she said. And I was like, you know what? You look like you eat soap. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Like the like the TLC episode. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I was like, you look like you eat soap, and then they just then they deleted my uh, comment. Y'all didn't see said everything I was bullying. that led up to this. I was like, she said five different things about me, like with curse words, with like yeah. fu's, and like everything all involved, like. I think she might have put a couple niggas in there. Like yeah, it was not a, fair. Yeah, and then all I said was, "You look like you eat soap," and then they made it seem like I was bullying. No, I would say that's uh, that. Uh, you got that one wrong. Yeah. Ig fact but, checkers, you messed that one up. But they do that all the time. They yeah. do get that shit wrong. They make a lot of mistakes with that. Absolutely, I I would like to apply for that job. Um, right, because they be fucking up. What is your you? So you're here today. You brought new music. You have new music. Always got new music. I mean, I know I saw you working with X. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Damn. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, got a, That's Sacktown favorite right I now. got... Okay, we're going to have to remix it, and we got to get that record in there to him it's immediately. Right. Okay. For sure. Because um, you have a song with X-Rated. I do got a song with X-Rated that just dropped like two days ago. I know. I, was, I listened to so it. That's so crazy. Shouts out to my brother X, man, and um, shouts out to all the good people over at Strange Music. Thank you for everything y'all did to push that record through because it was a crazy ordeal with getting the record done, with mm-hmm. clearing it, and they had to remake the beat, and it was just it took a lo- whole process from the time of us getting the record done, and then you know them having to like work through all this red tape to the get the record out, right. and the paperwork, mm-hmm. and just it was crazy just trying to get the record out, and um, they did it though, That's and what... it, and it landed on the album, you know what I'm saying? But X was really pushing for it. Um, the the people over at Strange they was really pushing for the record so man that was just a big blessing thank you thank you thank you yeah what's the call what's the title um the song is called Elevating um with me and X rated and um the the album his album is called Ascend in Heaven yes I do know too he just did some work with um Strange actually 
put T Nutty. Um, I can't remember who else was from SAC on there, but they just worked with all of them. Tech Nine, oh Blizzo, the Protocol. They all went and worked with Tech and uh, X Rated at Strange. So he's really been trying to help the local um, artists out, especially SAC Town. So much love to X. I am supposed to interview him. I just need to get to Vegas to do that, and I love you to death, and I'm coming. Yeah, so, right. Yeah, he, I mean, X is a, a good fucking... dude, man. When he when he first got out. We hung out and we tapped in. You know, I interviewed him and stuff, you know, um, in the town on the rooftop. It was hella cool. And we just had a great conversation. And, you know, it was it was really touching to hear his 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 side and his point of view of what he had been through and um, all the things that he did and 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 how he had to sit in there and, and, and live through all that. The, the but then he had such a crazy vision for when he got out. He was like... And he did it. When I... When, you know, when I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do this. And I'm like... Okay, okay. Yeah. And everything he was saying was sounding dope. So I was like, please do that. But yo, he did that and then some. Yeah, elevating. If you airdrop it to him right now, I'm sure he can put yeah, it in. Yeah, I'm trying to find it right now. I'm like, where is it? Because I just I remember seeing the news the news come through on that that you had dropped a song with um, X Rated. Uh, yeah, but you know, you're always working as far as the music goes. Yeah, no, I, it's funny because I just dropped my EP. Um, it wasn't off of nothing. It just dropped out on on all all the platforms, and um, I was pushing that and all caught up in the midst of that and then X came with the re with his project and I was like damn this record is dropping too I was excited too cuz I was like damn that's that's back to back heat right there like absolutely yeah I um, love him for that Macaframa Lama was basically the soundtrack of my childhood my life Yo, my how teenage legendary years. is that record absolutely I I used to tell people from out of town this song was recorded in the jail like that that was the big thing nobody had really been doing that so it, it was definitely he was a trendsetter he still is um he's he's just a great guy and i've been watching his story too since he came home and the funniest shit is the day i got his phone number was actually at when he got out he did a show at F full circle brewery in fresno yeah i put his number in my phone and i broke my phone that day and um i didn't know that the phone would continue to call the last number called like over and over and over again because i broke my phone so it was calling x-rated's phone number it just kept calling him yes and i was like i had to power the phone down take the battery out i had to tell him later what was going on but he was probably like this crazy bitch um but it was my phone it broke i promise so i actually had to get a whole new phone because i didn't want to be calling x rated like back to back to back f and not say saying anything because shit got wet when you know when phones get wet it's yeah, haywire tell, tell d to turn on his uh oh yeah oh, there you, it is there it is i see yeah it. we're sending that over right now so we're gonna play it so is there anything you want to say about the song other than what you've just said elevating man i just want to say that uh shots out to my brother x rated um make sure you go check out his album a sin in heaven um shots out to strange music and yeah, man, um, I'm, I'm excited that I got to be a part of this record. I just think it's dope. I think it's a dope record, and I think that it's dope that X-Rated is getting a chance to do his shit and right. do his thing. And um, I'm just, I'm just proud to be a part of it. Both of y'all elevating. So that's a self self-explanatory. Let's run that in. Did you get it, Eddie? Got it. Yep. Thank you. Yo, what up? I'm Don P. I'm right here on 360 Radio with my girl, Mac Yee. And this is X-Rated featuring Don P. Elevating. Brand new. Out right now. Yee. World premiere. Anthem. Yee. Definitely an anthem. Yee, yee. You feel me? Everybody needs to hear that. We went up, right? It. Yeah. Come on, man. We went up. That's a real statement, though. Like, fuck the haters. Nah, that's what it was it's all about. totally real. It's crazy, too, because I went out to Vegas uh, to the compound out there, to his studio, you know, to the Block Star studio. I would love to, yeah. Yeah, I went out there and uh, was kicking it. And um, the producer, he was like, yo, like, he first I was there all day, right? I was just there all morning, just hanging out, chilling. I was damn near there by myself most of the day. Like, then finally everybody started showing up because, mm -hmm. you know, I flew in and I was just like kicking it and just like, oh, yeah, I want to see the studio. So I was I was super excited. And then uh, everybody started showing up. But the producer, he didn't show up for hell long. So I was like, damn, bro, when the producer comes, so I'm just sitting there. <laughs> you had antsy. time on your Yeah, hands. right. So but I'm 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 chilling. Right. So I'm like, let's I'm enjoying the food or whatever. 
And then uh, they had a dope, like, performance area and shit. So I was just kicking and smoking, meeting all the guys and stuff. And then uh, finally, bro came with some beats. And uh, he was like, check out these beats. I'm like, all right, bet. Then I literally left there, went to my hotel, and just was like, eh. Right. I was just on some mad, right. yeah, I was just like, mm -hmm. nah, on some mad scientist shit, like, just really excited. And, like, nothing else more than just pure um, excitement to get to work. And then um, I went right back to the studio that night. Mm -hmm. And they was like, what you doing back over here? I'm like, I'm ready. They're mm -hmm. like, you ready? I'm like, yeah, bro, I'm ready right now, bro. Let's let's go. Let's record right now. He's like, bro, this, kid, this guy's crazy, right? Right. And so, yeah, we just got right in there. And um, it was a trip because once I laid that once I laid that track, X wasn't there. Then he came in the door right as we was listening to the like what I had just the started. Playback, yeah. Yeah, we was listening to the playback right after I laid it. And then he's listening to it. He's sitting there. And then... Uh, a few minutes later, I'm, like, looking at my phone or something, talking to someone else, right? And then I just hear, <clears throat> and I look up, and I'm like, what? And he's, like, in the booth laying his verse. Honore, yeah. Like, right. he's already in there just laying his verse. It was so dope. Yeah, he It was is, just one though. of the dopest moments, you know? So that's that's just a little bit from that, from the making of that record. Like, it was just an exciting moment mm -hmm. that, you know, he heard that and liked it and was like, yo, I'm jumping on this joint. It's like, very motivational. Yeah, that's I mean, what it's all about. I mean, because he's that kind of guy. Yeah, nah, it's all about that, too. Like, even with my music right now, I didn't want to be on no, uh, you know, negativity. You mm -hmm. know, I want to be on some fun shit. And I know that might be a little bit... Uh, less attractive because everybody like all the like you know the drill shit or the like you know murder music or whatever you want to call it like everybody's into it i'm not mad at it you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying i'm mad at the people that's actually dying in real life i think that's hella boosie that really sucks where's the camera that, all of them yeah that fucking sucks like real talk it so does if y'all could figure out how to do the arnold schwarzenegger version of this shit where you talk about all the crazy shit and do and act it out in your videos and all that but don't i gotta actually go kill nobody in real life that shit would be way better you get your bag. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you know I what I mean? I think it's turning a corner. It might be hitting the block. Mm. I think so. You know what I mean? Like, I think right now, I think after uh, 50 of, 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 of your favorite rappers already died, I think it's starting to sink in. Yeah. After about 150, I think we'll be actually be there. Correct. <laughs> it takes, and it's, uh, and you're right. I mean, uh, I feel like, though, that everyone everyone has a certain sound for them yeah. so you may not attract the people who like the drill music right. with your songs but you are going to attract the players and the pimps and the hustlers and the, anybody yeah. that wants to be motivated if you want to if you motive if you like getting money if you like beautiful women if you like trying to live the best life that you could ever live possible believing in yourself fly clothes smoking the best weed traveling the world eating the best food having the best sex in the world, then fuck with Don P. <laughs> he said, come to death row. <laughs> come to death row. No, real <laughs> talk, though. Like, that's the that's the vibe that I'm on. Like, I just want to see everybody, like, do be the best version of them, you know? I ain't going to say, like, everybody always say, I want to see everybody win. That shit is fake. Everybody can't fucking win, okay? Right. Everybody can't go. Everybody don't get a participation trophy. That's not how this shit works. It's the best of the best. Either you putting in that work every day to be the best of the best and the best that you could be, or you fucking falling behind and people going to leave you in the fucking dust. And Period. It's, and that's just what it is. This shit is a competition, even if you're not trying to compete. Right. And I'm not, but I still continuously do. <laughs> At you the do. same time. All you got to do is operate and be yourself on a, on a, but that's like you doing you on a high level, right? Right. So as long as you doing that, then you're already competing, right? right? Mm -hmm. So even if you're not directing your, you know, your energy towards people like they might be directing it towards you. It's you're, right? you're actually in the game. Yeah, you in the game. That's what it's all about. Like you got to be in the game. If you're not in the game, then shit, you on the sideline talking shit. You in the peanut gallery. So let's talk about this podcast, and then we're gonna play another song. Um, how are you looking for people to interview? Or are you just like selecting people as you go? What's the what's the deal for people who have asked me? Like, how do I get on there? Well, you gotta ask Don P. Hey, you know what? <laughs> I really like. I really do take the time to listen to people's music mm -hmm. and look at their careers. Um, I, I definitely um, research everybody before they come on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Like, I look into what they're into, like, 
what they've been doing, like, so I can, mostly just so I can shine a light and talk about them. And it doesn't have to, you don't got to be super famous. You don't got to have a million followers. Like, none of that is the criteria to be on the show. You just got to be somebody that really goes hard, that really wants to, you know, get yourself out there. Mm-hmm. And you just hit me up. Like, hit me up on on Instagram, at Don P. Official. Hit me up. And this is, again, for those who weren't listening, um, the podcast is Riding and Smoking. He has the merch on. Um, but uh, he literally, like, got me for the interview as I was walking out of a concert in Brentwood because he for can sure. pull his podcast up to wherever people are at. Yeah, so it's it's the world's first mobile podcast. Um it's a podcast van. It, a lot of people be like, is it a taco truck? Or like, <laughs> people always think it's a food truck when I'm like, you know, when we parked outside, they like, when I'm out there what walking around, there? Yeah. they're like, this one girl, like in Brentwood, matter of fact, the one girl in Brentwood just kept saying to me, I think she was drunk, but she just kept saying, can you bring me some tacos? <laughs> What's in your truck? Can you go in your truck and give me some tacos? She just kept saying, go no give me some tacos. tacos. In I was there, like, baby girl, there's no, no tacos in there. It's a podcast in there. I can go in there and do interview you real quick. And she was like, okay. <laughs> and then she sat there for a minute and then she'd be like, you're cute. Can you give me some tacos? I'm like, damn. Well, that's downtown Brentwood Yeah, for you. she was tweaking. But yeah, like, so people think it's like lots of different things, but it's really a truck that looks like a food truck, but on the inside, it's a fully functional, laid out podcast studio. And who is your, um, who did your production that night I was there? Who does your board for you in there or your cameras? Oh, yeah, yeah. I got my guy Jake in there running the Jake. boards. Yeah, yeah for right. sure. Shouts out to Jizzle, young Jizzle from the bottom of the map. Yeah, we need to shout out the team. Yeah, for sure. You know, I mean, and the whole riding and smoking team, everybody is on their stuff. Everybody's on their, on their game and we just go out. We pull up to events. Um, we just did the Emerald Cup, actually. I saw that. Yeah, we just did the Emerald Cup. Shouts out to the Emerald Cup. And for you're going to get us. some real characters out of that. Yeah, you know, that was a cannabis event. So it was very, very lit to be there with the Riding and Smoking right. <laughs> podcast. Very appropriate. Yeah, mm-hmm. shouts out to my brother, Mr. Fab. He was there. He performed. Um, he was a headliner, actually. Um, he came on the podcast that night. Is my that girl. where you ran into Midzotics? Um, um, yeah, I did see uh, Shoddy. Uh, yes. Where is that where I Shot saw well, Shoddy? Shot well, yeah. And he wears uh, like the mullet and he drives like the car with his Midzotics. But he, yeah, like his mullet, I don't think, like that's his hair. I know. It's yeah. how it really is. But it is a mullet. Yeah, yeah. That, that, oh, that is the mullet cut, That's huh? the style of, yeah, the mullet. That's hella that's funny. That's called uh, Party in the... Business in the front, party, party in the, in the back. Re- yeah, that's yeah. right. I love Matt Shotwell. Well, Matt's, you know, that's my guy from Vallejo. Like, I love Matt. We just, you know, that's my guy from uh, doing just cannabis stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, we've been tapped in for many moons. I mean, and, you know, he had the can of... Uh, the gold cannabis, you know, the driving. Yeah, mm-hmm. the twerk. No, not the twerkulator. Oh, the gold bus. Yeah, the that gold cannabis. Yeah, that was at one of the videos. Twerkulator is the other one. Different bus. Yeah, that's a different one. It's got some buses out yeah, here in same, California. Yeah, same, same, same kind of like, you know, whatever, Vibe. whatever. Yeah. But the the gold cannabis was different. You know, Matt would pull that up to the studio. Like, I shot videos in there. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I did some pretty cool stuff, like, in, in that van, you know, um, and Matt would pull that joint up. But, Midzotics is crazy. Um, he's a funny guy, and yeah, I did have him on there. But he was just telling a story about the uh, going to Burning Man on, on the show, oh, and yeah. I just posted the clip on there, and that that clip is going viral right now. Just, oh yeah, I'm yeah, sure his Matt. stories are, are crazy. Yeah, because he was talking about how eighty thousand people got stuck in the mud at Burning Man. <laughs> like I would never. Yeah, I'm like, not going to Burning Man. Even Burning Man is crazy. I'm lightweight a hippie in my own right. I would not be in, at Burning Man just because I wouldn't get want to get stuck out there. Um, we're gonna play another song, and it's gonna be off of the. Is it off the new project? Um, I think. Uh, what you got? Cash and Go pulled up. Cash and Go, Eddie. Is that what you have? Yep. Yo, so Cash and Go is actually off my last album. Oh uh, no, no, the album before that. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I've been dropping I've been dropping some stuff, man. Um yeah, I dropped a a, a, a album titled self titled album called Don P. Mm-hmm. That's out there, so you can go check that out. Um one of the records we're gonna play is off of that. But this one is from my E P Neighborhood Superstar. Cause you know I'm a neighborhood superstar for sure. Like Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Like that's how the whole Don P thing really started. Like it really started in the neighborhoods. Like mm-hmm. I used to just be in the neighborhoods flying through in whatever car I had that summer or whatever, you know? And I was just 
a known a known fella in the hood, mm-hmm. you know? People knew me in lots of neighborhoods. I was always good wherever I went. I didn't really have a lot of problems, you know, because I always kept it player, you mm-hmm. know? And um and I just kept those connections and that kind of wavy type of lifestyle to the de- to this day. So yeah, it's yeah. a win win. Yeah, so that's neighborhood superstar man. Uh, y'all check this out. This the, this is Cash and Go, the remix featuring my brother Black C from RBL Posse. Hey, oh man, I love rapping Fote, man. I would love to get him in here. That's Unk right there. He just hit me up. He got some. He got something He doing like a documentary or something. He asked me to come be a part of. That would be awesome. Yeah. Shouts out to rapping Fote, man. Um, I love you, bro. Love you know what I'm saying? Like, go ahead, Unc. You know it's nothing but love. That's a legendary legend right there. Yeah. Surely. Yep. I, I, so it was um, fun making that. I love being able to say that I watched his, you know, career like progress and he was just always the shit. Yeah. <laughs> and he always will be. Nah, and that song is just monumental. I feel like a lot of people copy his style, but they don't give him the credit. You're right. You know what I mean? I would agree with that. They don't mention him, but I, I know they copied his style because I've seen it. Mm-hmm. He's you know? definitely a trendsetter in this yeah, area, for he sure. He definitely started some trends like and had some looks that other people definitely copied. Right. He just actually looked like whatever a act. When you close your eyes and think of what a pimp looked like, he just had. A, he just looked like right, that. You right. know what I'm saying? He From just that, had that, that, that era, like, you know what I mean? He had that just, that super fly look, you know? And uh, I feel like a lot of people... Got up on that. And, and smooth as butter. Like, his yeah. delivery is just crazy. Like, yeah, right? His voice, right? Smooth like Smooth as God. butter. Yeah, shouts out to that Frisco legend. Shouts out to all the Frisco legends out there, Absolutely. Man. And the Bay Area legends and the Sacktown legends. And, you know. All the legends. All the legends. And the new guys, too, man. Shouts out to everybody, man, that's really going hard. If you if you a legend and you quit, then um, I hope today or tomorrow or this morning or this night or whatever it is to you right now, when you're seeing this, that you uh, that you just get back into your shit, you know what I mean? And if you're just starting, um, start. That's all I can tell you. Right. You know, start. Like, the last thing you, that you're going to do is make it if you never start. You'll never make it if you never start. Absolutely. And you know, all the rest of you guys, if you quit, same to you. You'll never make it. If you quit. If you quit, you'll never. That's the 100% sure way we know you're not going to make it is if you quit. Absolutely. Yeah, you 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 really nailed it. Then you got it locked in. I you, think too the statement um, half of the battle is being there is the truth. Like you yeah. just got to get up and go, even though you may not want to go to some places or opportunities or shows or whatever it may be. You just got to get up and go because when you once you're there, that's half the battle. You know, like you've made yeah. it there, and that could be more than anybody else did. So you never yeah. know. And the small things too, like people always want to do something big. Or do the biggest things, you know, and it's like you can't really determine what the biggest things are. Mm -mm. You're not the determiner of that. It all should be big (laughs) to you. Yeah, you feel me? You should know that you're doing things brick by brick and it doesn't matter the size and the moment of every single thing that you do. You got to realize that everything counts and everything matters. So just keep piling it on and keep making it dope. And he ain't charging y'all for this game, okay? No. And I'm not either. No, it's free game. Like, if you share game with people, like, I think that's important. Like, I feel like we had a lot of false gatekeepers and a lot of, you know, people who keeping gates and stopping, you know, not really cock blocking. That's the thing. You people who think y'all keeping gates, y'all not really cock blocking the greats that's going to still make it through and the people that's going to make it through. All you doing is just kind of messing up the game a little bit. Mm-hmm. You're not really stopping nobody though. Like it's like a speed bump. Yeah, it's like it's yeah. just irritating. Yeah, That's it's all. kinda irritating. <laughs> like, you know, you just you're not really stopping nothing, but you really are hindering the culture though. That's the biggest thing. Like you you're you're stifling the culture. And like, who wants to do that? Yeah. No. You know? Don't no stifle one. the culture, man. Just go ahead and push the shit forward and let a lot of more people eat. Mm-hmm. Like let a lot more people win and, and let a lot more people in. That's why I like what. Shouts out to my brother Russell. I like what he's doing. You know, um, opening up doors and stuff Absolutely. like that, and showing people that you don't got to be a gangster or that it's okay to share with your people. It's okay to share, guys. You know, you don't got to be the only person with a big chain on around your homies. Right. Like everybody can have a chain. It used to be that way that the whole camp eats. Like that's yeah. how it used to be. Yeah. That's how it should get back to. 
Yeah. I, I feel that way. Um, any, anybody you want to shout out, anybody you want to thank, any shows you want to plug, now's your time. Man, the biggest thing I want y'all to do is uh, however you want to do it, you can go on even.biz and get my new album where you can buy art straight from the artists. Um, it's pay what you want. My new EP, It Wasn't All For Nothing, featuring Jay Stylin and my brother M. Taylor. Um, and my homegirl, So Vicious, shouts out to So Vicious. Oh, we love all those. Oh, you know, yeah, all those people are awesome. Um, so you can go on even.biz and, and get the album straight for me if you want to really just support and show some love um, and get the whole album off there. Shouts out to those people, uh, Madge and everybody over at Even and the homie La Russell. Or you can just, you know, go stream the new EP on um, on my Spotify, Don P. And yeah, at Don P. Official. And of course, follow Riding and Smoking at Riding and Smoking. No G's on the on the end. Oh, it's just R I D I N mm -hmm. and Smoking. So follow Riding and Smoking and go to the YouTube, subscribe, um, watch the videos and the interviews and. Yeah, that's it, man. Just turn us up, man. Turn me up. Yeah, I love y'all. That part. Well, we love you, and we're glad you made it. And uh, now you know the new building is. You can. Well, you've been known where the new building nah, is. No, nah, no, I didn't. Know. I didn't know this was the new building. Right. though. It's, it's dope. You know what I mean? Your other setup was cool, but this Thank is cool. You. Yeah, I like this too. Like this is dope. You this know what is mean? actually the room that all the big, big major interviews were in. Yeah, so yeah. I felt like the energy was uh, matching, appropriate. Yeah, you wanted to be in that room to catch that, that good. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's I've been here before. Actually, all Eddie, Eddie Z was the man that put that together. So he does that very well. Shots out to Eddie give Z. Both of them their credit. Yeah. Um, and my shooter. I mean, this guy's been shooting me for like seven years, faithfully every Monday night. Every I know. Every Monday night. I know. Night. I know. He's a cold piece of chicken, man. Shots out to you, bro. It's I appreciate you it's wild every single time he here yep it's and that's what it takes is showing up so yeah man um shots out to all the shots out to the family over at riding and smoking shots out to everybody that's been supporting um with the music and everything i've been doing shots out to you mickey thank you thank you for having me I here today no i problem. appreciate this you know what i mean eddie z shouts out to the cameraman for sure and just like i said shouts out to all the people out there that been you know Checking out the music and, and bumping my shit all this time. Everybody who come up to me and say, yo, Don P, I love distractions. I listen to that shit every morning before, when I'm getting dressed. Mm -hmm. Or Don P, I love your new EP. Or any of that type of stuff. Or if you just like my reaction videos. Or if you saw a podcast and you thought it was cool. Or if you saw one of the movies I did on Tubi and you was like, yo, that shit was funny. Like, that's the stuff that motivate me and keep me going. Just like when people really, uh, you know. And you're actually quite approachable. So if you do are a fan of his, talk to him. Let him know. Yeah, he man. Loves shout that out shit. to me, man. I'm not mad. Like I said, Don P. Official. Hit me up. Follow. Like, tap And I in. can't let you get out of here without plugging your plug, which is cookies. Because every time I see you, you got some cookies on. So shout out to man, the man. We his, always, his page just got taken down. Man, that's, that's jacked up. I don't really know what the whole circumstances is. But... I do know that Russ Buffalino is alive, so you can go follow him over <laughs> so there. So is Burner, um, Burner SF, the old page. <laughs> yeah, Burner, Burner SF, Burner, uh, Burner's right. page got took down, but Russ Buffalino, go follow Russ Buffalino. Yeah, yeah, that part. You feel me? And um, and of course, uh, and shouts out to Cookies SF because they keep your boy dipped, yep. super duper dipped for sure. Every day I wear cookies because you know, shit's fly to me. I don't know. Well, it is flies, but yeah, cookies flies is fuck. also a culture. Cookies is a big culture, man. You know, I watched it, you know, I watched it do what it did and I love Burn. I love all the people over there, Bill, um, Ron, everybody that's just been super supportive of my career and all the things that I've been doing and, you know, up until now, even the podcast, like just the way Cookies has supported me, I wanna just definitely shout out the whole Cookies family from the folks at the warehouse. Everybody at the stores down in L.A., Chris down there, like all the people that really just been supporting me out through my careers. When I get out to L.A., I'm at the BET Awards, and I'm like, yo, I need something to wear. Right. I'm about to hit the carpet. It's always nice They're to like, yo, to pull up to the store. Like, let's get you fitted. Got let's it. get you right yep, for, no the, for the for the red carpet. And then they just lace me for the weekend and make sure I'm out there in the new fashion.